I punched him dead in the face and he went down like a ton of bricks. None of the black organizations are called hate groups. Where was your brain when you was having four kids and you're only 24 years old? My fellow Americans, having seen the potency of today's talk show highlights, myself along with a scattering of talk show players and crew members have made an official scramble here to the E! Entertainment Television steel vaulted bunker located some 657 feet below the Earth's surface. Even as we broadcast, Tom McNamara has begun sorting and rationing water and freeze-dried food products. We've disengaged from society and ostracized ourselves from friends and loved ones for no particular reason, however, putting us over the edge and initiating perhaps our final evacuation from the world was probably April, a cross-dressing nurse who works in a mental hospital. This came from Stewart's Plus. Um, uh -huh. I don't, uh, the black shirt came from Conway's in Manhattan. What size do you wear? 24 dress size. Okay. Now, I, what size do you wear in men's clothing? I have no idea. <laughs> uh, I, I went to get a pair of pants and the guy asked me what size I wear and I said, yeah, I don't know. And he said, well, what about a shirt? And I said, I don't know. And he, and so he, and he it, laughed. He said, what about a dress? And I said, 24. And he just looked at me and he went. <laughs> well, now, you, you go to work, though, in the day as? Um, I, go, I go to work as a male. I work in a psych hospital. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Wait, it gets better. Um, Laura works there with him. Laura, that's, that's where we met. That's where we met. Um, I love it. I, I, I go to work as a male. I have to wear a uniform. Um, I do wear my nails colored all the time, and I do usually dangling earrings simply because they're fun. Uh, so it's I, a work, and, and no one thinks that this is... Um, everybody knows. Everybody... We live in an apartment complex. And they um, all know. My neighbors all know about April. Um, right. My knows family about knows about April. Your friends all know. Hey, I go to the same campus. We go to the same school, and... <laughs> April, and, and no on too, campus, she's done speeches. It's kind of good because I, anything I need, I get it firsthand because of, because of her. Because April's kind of a celebrity on campus. Yeah. Okay, now you laugh, but let me tell you about the University for the Sciences of Transsexual Cross-Dressing Hermaphrodites. It is fully accredited, Tom. Four-year school. That is April, big cross-dresser on campus there. Hey, what the heck was that? April's real name is Don. His wife, Laura, has been known also to dress up in drag. On those occasions, she goes by the name... Hank. On Friday's show, Bertiz hears from women who say their husbands are too close to their ex-wives. Whatever happened to the good old days when divorced people hated each other? It'll be Friday. When a man attacks a woman, that's abuse, but what about when a woman attacks a man? Montel invited John Wayne Bobbitt on his show to talk about the pain he suffered at the hands of his wife, Lorena. Another guest on the panel was Christine, a woman who admits that she occasionally beats her husband to a bloody pulp, particularly when he's sleeping around on her. You caught your lover in a lie, right? My husband. Your husband? Yes. And what did you do to him? Um... I punched him dead in the face and he went down like a ton of bricks. I wasn't going to tolerate. I mean, he just, I called him with his girl and she, he came to my house with her after he had lied to me and lied to me and lied to me. Plus, while we were living in the same house, he continually abused me, abused the legal system abused as well. Abused you how? Physically abused Physically, you? yes. So you punched him in the jaw and knocked him out? Oh yeah, I would do it again too. Okay. But... Without a second thought. And as far as, I want to say something. I well, do you to... think what you did was abuse? No. Oh, so it's okay for a woman to punch her husband in the face? That's not oh, abuse? Wait a minute, ladies? wait a minute, wait a minute. Hmm? Wait a minute, okay? I want to say something, because when I was downstairs in the back watching your segment earlier, um, I've seen that look on John Bobbitt's face, and I've seen it on my husband's face. Oh, that oh, innocent God. little me, I don't do anything wrong attitude, okay? It's so That's guilt by facial expression, I guess, there. Christine looks like she was about to slap him around a little bit. According to a recent USA Today CNN Gallup poll, 51% of the women in this country feel Lorena Bobbitt was justified in mutilating her husband. Later in the show, Christine shared these insights into the male psyche. 
Women's intuition. Now, if There's all of a sudden... There's only two ways to get to right, a man. Right, but hold on a second. And they're both in his pants. Yeah. Uh, in his wallet or in his crotch. Okay, Friday, we're gonna have to move on. Friday, Montel hears from women who say they're sick of putting up with their mooching sisters. Get a job, get a life. Hey, get out of my pantry. Well, right, the life protesters have protested at a number of Planned Parenthood clinics around this country. That's no new news. Dr. Susan Wicklin is a gynecologist who also performs abortions on the side. Tuesday, she told Mo how coming to work in the morning can be extremely difficult. Take a look at this. Oh, the clinic was nuts. I mean, that was a place, as you've probably heard about all the people protesting and, and blocking doors and locking their, their necks to... Uh, the clinic doors and this kind of stuff and that was going all the time jumping on cars trying to stop any car that had someone that looked like me I wore disguises a lot um, as have lots of other physicians um, Trying to get in at one point was actually pretended. I was one of the protesters out front I had a long wig on and a black <coughs> jumper and you know and makeup You know and, and the kinds of clothes I generally don't wear and was and had joined this crowd of about 200 outside the clinic and just kind of kept mingling with them, getting closer and closer to the clinic, you know, saying, don't kill any more babies. And finally got to the front door, and the guard caught his eye, and he just about crapped when he realized it was me. <laughs> and put his arm up, and I dived underneath and went in the door and then just collapsed in the stairway and bawled because I was so scared. I thought, you know, when I'm, you're out there. It's and like, then you have to treat patients after you've been through this. The woman who comforted me the most when I first came in the door and was absolutely freaked out, turned out to be a patient that I saw an hour later, um, and then I was able to help her. So it was right. real interesting, the, the give and take. There you have it. That is the highlight of the Mo Gaffney Show. On Friday's show, Mo meets a couple engaged in a process known as gender reconciliation. Can there ever be a truce when it comes to the battle of the sexes? We'll take a quick break and be back. Is the clan all it's cracked up to be? You'll find out. And Francisco becomes just another wishbone caught in a romantic tug of war next. Do you accept the fact that he is still sleeping with his wife? He, he is not sleeping with her. He slept the night he was not sleeping with her. We're back. You're watching Talk Soup. I'm Bianca Ferrar. I think we have a bit of discrepancy right now. Francisco says he does not want anything to do whatsoever with his, with his ex-wife, but she claims the two of them are still having intimate interludes frequently. Naturally, Francisco's current sweetheart wants to find out what the heck is going on here. Noticed I said heck as opposed to hell, Mom. My mother writes me a letter the other day. Honey, do you have to say the word hell? She obviously doesn't know the content of Talk Soup. I believe we passed the word hell a long time ago here. Nonetheless, in the name of domestic harmony right now, Richard Bay asks all three, all three of these people, and I guess Francisco's seated in the middle, to try and work things out on his show. And as is usually the case on Richard, they don't. You still sleep together? Yes. Yeah. Alicia, Alicia, yes. is this news to you or do you know about this? This has been going on and off like this. She's, when he goes there to visit his son, she be calling my house, oh, he was here. Meanwhile, when I call his ho mother's house, he's home with his mother. Okay, well, now wait a second. Do you, do you know, do you accept the fact that he is still sleeping with his wife? He, he is not sleeping with her. He slept the night, he is not sleeping with her. Wait a okay. second. He slept with you the night before last night. And yesterday, too. And, and yesterday? Yes. He found his ticket. Oh, no. No, no, no. Let's go right to the source. Francisco. Francisco, are you sleeping with both these women? No. I saw a little crack forming in Francisco's structural confidence there. Yes? Hmm? A little while later, Alma pointed out a hickey on Francisco's neck that she claimed she planted there the night before. And of course, as you might expect, Francisco says, no, 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 that's not the case at all. I was playing football and was actually nailed by the 
protruding ball in the neck area, which then formed somewhat of a bruise that may be interpreted as a hickey, but it's, it's not a hickey. You know, I think this gentleman put it all into perspective for me. Do we, do we have that, Fred? Yeah, friends, if you tell, you know what I'm saying, Elman, you ain't, you know what I'm saying, doing nothing. I know you pimping it, you know what I'm saying, with the Timbs and all that. You know what I'm saying? The man will be a man, you know what I'm saying? I'll do the same thing. If I can get it, I'm going to pimp a honey too. So far. Uh, wait a second. I, I didn't understand. Can we say it one more time? I didn't. Yeah, friends, if you tell, you know what I'm saying, Elman, you ain't, you know what I'm saying, doing nothing. I know you pimping it, you know what I'm saying, with the Timbs and all that. You know what I'm saying? The man will be a man, you know what I'm saying? I'll do the same thing. If I can get it, I'm a pimple honey, too. So far. Oh, I'm here. Oh. On Friday's show, Richard speaks to lovers who say they'll do anything for love, well, almost anything. Find out why their relationships are in big time. Jeff Hardy. Paul and Beth are interested in joining an organization that will give them a sense of community involvement. So far, they've ruled out the PTA, the Girls Club of America, Big Sisters, and the Women League of Voters. In fact, they've pretty much narrowed it down to one very controversial organization. And this highlight from Jerry Springer, a former white supremacist, tries to convince these women that they should not, in fact, join the Ku Klux Klan. Up front, they're saying, we want to we want to promote whites, we want a white student union, we want we want to wrap ourselves in the flag, promote Christianity, but they, you go there, all they want is those, the, the subscriptions, they want the money, they want, for a woman to, a woman to be involved in these organizations, I mean, these organizations are highly chauvinist, for one, and when you're involved in these organizations, you, the, your first priority is your race. I mean, if you get involved with someone in these organizations, I mean, your needs are never going to be met because... Why does it have to be hate because it's the Klu Klux Klan? Why it is hate. That's what why? it is. That's no, what it no, is. None of the black organizations are called hate groups. Because they don't They're hang not going people. around murdering people. No, I don't want to they... go out and hang somebody. Well, I know, but the Klan has... See, that's what, that's what everyone's saying. What they're saying is you can decide that as citizens you want equal rights, you want rights preserved for all people. That's fair. But when you join an organization that has been throughout history associated with lynchings and killings and that kind of discrimination... That wasn't just the past, either. That's happening now. Why would you say... Of Are you in it now? What's that? Are you in it I right now? I used to now? be a leader. No, I was in it. I well, then you don't out. know. Yes, I do. I just... I was not a, if I was you're a not in it right now. I was a leader in the Klan. There you have it. Highlighted Jerry Springer. Dave says he got out of the Klan because people that he had actually recruited were committing murder later in the show the girls here came to a final decision on this whole matter take a look at this i like to thank everybody up here for making me see things i didn't see before and um i'll just look into a different organization maybe not for white or black people but just for people hey there you go try the pta on Jerry's show this Friday, a specialist in child abductions explains why you need to know to keep your children safe, how to go about doing that, because there's big problems these days, folks. That's Friday. Well, here's a unique way to improve one's self-esteem. Forget psychotherapy and hypnotherapy and whatever else. What you really need to do is go on national television and just kind of take a breath and put on a red clown nose and say, I count. I count. I'm important. Hmm? Ironic as that sounds, humiliating yourself in this fashion can actually shore up the sagging foundation of the damaged ego. At least that's what we found out from Dr. Gilda on Shirley. Joyce, say now. I count. I don't know whether I do or not. Say it. Say it anyway. I count. Say it like you really mean it. I have to really mean it. Yeah, you're so. right. You have to really mean it. And that means taking the time to go inside and look at yourself. But I in the meantime, to, start I to love can. yourself. But, but in the meantime, really. put on the mask and make like you're somebody else and say, I count. I don't even listen to videos that are comedy. Say, say I count. I count. Do you believe it? No. No. Wait, 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 wait. Put this nose on. <laughs> Here, I'm going to put one on, too. Now say, I count. <laughs> I count. <laughs> say it again. I count. Once again. I count. Do you believe it? It's getting better. It's getting, getting better. I believe it. 
I count. Two. A little bit. <laughs> what? You count, Tom. You count. Say I count. I count. Mm -hmm. I Say you count, Bob. I count. No. Was that your funny voice? <laughs> Dr. Gill Gill Gillicuddy is currently hawking a videotape titled How to Manage Anger and Take Control, possible subtitle here by making yourself look like Bozo. But I don't know whether or not that'll actually end up on the videotape, but apparently it's a possibility, you said? I don't know. Who knows? Friday on Shirley Show, get to know people who have risen above their troubled childhoods to lead happy and productive lives. We'll take a quick break and be back. Is Valencia in the running for Mother of the Year? You'll meet her after this. And remember, you count. While Valencia's husband is at home taking care of their four kids, she's out dancing with strange men and club hopping and just boogie woogie wooging. Does this make her a bad mom? Does it make her a lousy wife? Well, I don't know, but... Uh, you know, maybe somebody in Ricky's audience might have some thoughts on this whole subject. I mean, I, I don't know, but I would think that... Yes, I wanted to say to Valencia, you say you got it going on and you have a brain. Where was your brain when you was having four kids and you're only 24 years old? Thank you! 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 When I just turned 18, I've been married for six years. Okay, check yourself. No. You check yourself for 18 years I, old. That's when you, you should have been doing what you're doing dress. now. I don't regret uh, 18 anything. 18 years old, that's what you should have been doing then. No, not let me what you're tell doing you now. something. You have four I kids had now. My you should choice. dedicate your time I had my to your kids and, and your it. husband. I have Your husband, husband did not marry four kids. He married you. Right. <laughs> me. me. today. Yes. My husband made four children but with me, okay? And I do have a career, honey. Check yourself. Check yourself. You don't know okay. me. You don't know me, honey. You just wish that you look as good as I do after you have four. Friday on Ricky's show, singer Freddie Jackson will be singing songs of love as some guests receive their Valentine egg covers. <laughs> oh, goodness. Just so much goofiness in one day. On Tuesday, Bob Berkowitz welcome adult film actress Marilyn Chambers to Real Personal. She is now crossed over from X-rated porn films to R-rated comedies these days. Seen on pay-per-view, Chambers has been married for the past seven years and has a two-and-a-half-year-old daughter that she just adores. And how does an ex-porn star deal with being a mommy in this day and age? Here's what she told Bob. Your daughter's two-and-a-half. Yes. What are you going to do when she's old enough to understand about your background? What are you going to tell her? Well, that's something that I've been kind of, uh, you know, worrying about a little bit. Talk to psychologists about it and whatnot. I say, don't worry about it right now. Uh, because she definitely has to be told mm -hmm. before somebody else tells her. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I'm proud of what I've done. Uh, obviously, I can't change my past to fit right. her present or right. her future. So she's going to have to deal with it. And we have to deal with our parents. I don't consider it a mistake, but she may. That's okay. her prerogative, and that's okay. fine. Um, this Does is she what have I've any inkling at this age? She saw me in a mess. She got a hold of one of my mag. I, I had really? let, put it up in the shelf in this closet, and she climbed up there, and she got it, and she oh, goes... Magazine where you were nude in? Yeah, she yeah. goes, oh, that's Mommy, and it's like, you know. Um, Was she, her reaction any more than that's Mommy? No. Well, like, she asked about the super restraining gag ball in Mommy's mouth, but other than that, Chambers' latest film is Marilyn Chambers' bedtime stories. Friday on Real Personal, Bob Berkowitz will be examining the subject of sexual nurturing between men and women. Friday. We got one more highlight for you. It's Sally Kirkland coming out as you've never seen her before. Sense Around and Jiggle Rama next.
We're back with one last highlight for you. It's Talk Soup, and I don't know what else to say other than... And now, here's Sally. <laughs> On Vicky's show this Friday, cast members from The Bold and the Beautiful will... <laughs> oh, goodness. We'll be dropping by to help fulfill some viewer fantasies. Thanks for joining us. That's going to do it for this Talk Soup. Tune in Monday night, the 14th, Valentine's Day. Be on Conan O'Brien having all sorts of goofy fun. That's going to do it now. See you tomorrow. YNR, b and AMC, GH, if this means anything at all to you, and I know it does, then you'll want to stick around and watch Pure Soap, packed with highlights from all of your favorite shows. It's coming up next. Could you pass the Twinkie, please?